Khan turned 71 on October 5th. On this fateful day, he finds himself locked in a death cell. Pakistani generals want him to surrender to their plans of perpetual military domination. The Bhutto ki hukumat khatam ho chuki hai. Sare mulk mein mashallah nafis kar diya gaya hai. Qami aur subai assemblyan tod di gayi hain. Subai governor aur wazir hata diye gaye. The acceptability of martial law is just zero in this country now. His political opponents wish him dead or disappear into thin air. Together they have registered well above 100 cases of murder, corruption, terrorism, contempt, treason and leaking state secrets against him. In many of these cases he can face death penalty. Donald Lewis ko keh raha hai Asad Majid ko ke Imran Khan ko agar aap nahi hataoge to tumhare mulk ko mushkilat ka samna karna padega. to countless millions of Pakistanis in a country of 240 million and to large Pakistani diasporas spread around the world across North America, Europe and Middle East, he is an icon, a symbol of their hopes and aspirations for a new Pakistan, a better future. Many have started calling him Murshid. That means a Sufi guide, a teacher, that suggests religious connotations. But nothing can be more misleading. Khan is not a religious leader. His pulpit and appeal both are much diverse and different. Though his opponents led by Pakistan's English-speaking chattering classes have painted him as an Islamist, Taliban Khan, a fundamentalist and anti-West. And my belief is, la la la, there is no God but one. And we will fight. Mera tera rishta kya? Will you allow the American government to have CIA here in Pakistan uh, to conduct cross-border counter-terrorism missions against Al-Qaeda, ISIS, 
or the Taliban? Absolutely not. In reality, Khan is a popular politician who, like any popular politician anywhere in the world, echoes the multitude of feelings, emotions and needs that define his people, their history and their sense of identity. To give hope to the poor and demoralised people of Pakistan, more than 95% of whom are Muslims, to unite them on a platform for change, to make them believe in the possibility of a welfare state. He inspires through examples. He naturally starts with Prophet of Islam and the state of Medina. But he also talks of Winston Churchill, British NHS, Scandinavian welfare system, American enterprise, Indian democracy, Mahatma Gandhi's humanism, Narendra Modi's nationalism, and English rule of law. Winston Churchill, when the war was going on in Britain, Hitler's forces were standing on the border of France. When people ask us if we will be saved, he said, عدالت انصاف دے رہی ہیں تو ہم بچ جائیں گے یعنی قوموں کی جو بنیاد رکھی جاتی ہے وہ اخلاقیات کے اوپر ہندوستان امریکہ کا اسٹریٹجک الائے ہے ہمارا کوئی امریکہ کے ساتھ الائنس نہیں ہے ہندوستان امریکہ کا اسٹریٹجک الائے ہے اور ان کو جب امریکہ نے کہا کہ آپ روس سے تیل نہ خریدیں تو ان کے فورن منسٹر نے کیا کہا اس نے آگے سے کہا تم کون ہوتے ہو میں کہنے والے یورپ خرید رہے تیل ان سے ہمارے لوگوں کی ضرورت ہے ہم خریدیں گے یہ ہوتا ہے آزاد ملک کانز ورلڈ از بگ برائٹ اینڈ بیوٹیفل ہی ایگزٹس ایٹ اے جنکشن آف اسلام اینڈ دا ویسٹ بٹ سنس ویسٹرن میڈیا اینڈ پالیٹیشنز انٹرپریٹ اینڈ انڈرسٹینڈ اے نوئزی اینڈ کنفیوزنگ پاکستان تھرو اٹس انگلش اسپیکنگ کلاسز سو مینی اینڈ اپ بلیونگ دا ربش نانسنس اسٹوریز آف اے فکشنل طالبان کان ریالٹی از دیٹ کان از از مچ اے پروڈکٹ آف ویسٹ آف برٹن ایز ہی از آف پوسٹ کلونیل مسلم پاکستان Born into an educated middle-class family of professionals in Lahore with Pashtun ancestry, he spent his formative years in Britain. As a child growing up in Lahore, he told his mother that he wants to be a test cricketer. I was 9 years old, so I went to Lahore Stadium with my father and I went to test match. So I told my father that I would like to become a test cricketer. After Aitchison College in Lahore, he landed in Oxford University that started him on an unending journey of adventure, success and self-discovery. On this road less travelled, he led Pakistan to a rare victory in Cricket World Cup. Raised funds for series of cancer hospitals, a university founded Pakistan's largest political party and kick-started a campaign of political consciousness that has transformed Pakistani hearts and minds. For the first time in their history, Pakistanis have woken up to realize that their problems are not due to India and Israel, but due to a wicked system of civil military bureaucracies that have failed democracy and human development. No mean achievement for a man in one lifetime. No doubt he is a Murshid and Sufi teacher to countless millions. Coming back to his multicultural experiences, for almost 22 years, he played county and international cricket from Britain becoming a part of English society and a household name across countries of British Commonwealth. 
before falling madly in love with the stunningly attractive Jemima Goldsmith, with whom he has his two sons. He was a celebrated playboy between London, California and Mumbai, dating the likes of Liza Campbell, Caroline Kellett, Emma Sergent, Zee Nataman and many others. Perhaps it was his marriage with an English woman of Jewish descent that made him conscious of his own identity. Human psyche is mysterious, but it appears he didn't want to lose himself to Jemima's world of riches and glitter, but wanted her to become part of his world and values. She being only 21 at that point and passionately in love obliged. But it was a difficult and perhaps unrealistic demand. Politics like human psyche is complex too. His marriage and enduring bond with Jemima, despite their separation, has further endeared him to Pakistani people. They instinctively realize that another man in his position would have milked Jemima's billionaire father, James Goldsmith, for money and privileges, would have opted for a life between Europe and North America, but Khan destined to be the prime minister of Pakistan and Murshid to his teeming millions was different. Different in his DNA, different in his psyche. Many in the West don't understand how miserably corrupt Pakistani politicians and civil military bureaucrats have been. How helpless Pakistanis have felt trapped between the musical chair of military and feudal dynasties. And how Imran Khan appears to Pakistanis as a knight in shining armour. A crusader against corruption defining hopes of a better future. Like the hero of a Greek tragedy, this contrast lies at the roots of his power and defines his chilling predicament. Will Khan end up as Achilles in this epic battle of Trojan horses, or will return victorious to Athena as Odysseus to lead people of Pakistan? No one knows. 